I want to take a little bit of time before we get started on the question and answer portion to just thank all of the people that submitted questions. We had an incredible turnout with an incredible amount of questions. And so what we have done is attempted to streamline the most pressing and the most commonly asked questions for this session tonight. If you don't hear what you're expecting to hear, you can rest assured that we are creating an FAQ that we will distribute to all families in the coming, day, coming days, along with further conversations with division heads. So Jeff, the first and probably most common question, which you touched on at the beginning of your presentation, was around the start date. So can you expound a little further on why we need an extra two weeks and unpack what specifically will be happening during that time. Yeah, great, great question. And um, as I did mention that the, the key kind of 10,000 foot uh, need for those days is that reorientation to make sure um, everyone in the community is comfortable and understands our new kind of policies and protocols. And we can do that in a really thoughtful, individualized way with smaller groups on campus. So looking at that as a need, then the divisions have pulled back to say, what are those key elements that are developmentally appropriate for each division and what pieces and what structures do we have in place that we might leverage to do that? So in, in lower school, for example, those um, intake conferences are now going to take on a shape where the individual student and the parent can come in to see the space and actually the, the student, especially the students that are new to Wellington, to have those elements where they can come in and see that space before that first day of school and work with their teacher to really understand um, what school looks like, what the ex expectations will be for them to answer any questions they have. So at the lower school level, some smaller groups at middle and upper, you could think of uh, advisory groups coming in, middle schoolers coming in to select and, and set up their lockers. Even if they will be learning from home, they could still get assigned a locker and make sure They've got their space on campus for, for if and when they choose to return. And so that, that smaller group work to build in for upper school, time for the grade levels, the senior experience to start the year and the needs they have with some college counseling consultation as they're building their college applications and, and doing those final um, schedule edits and also moving through the spaces at the grade level to see what, it, what, what upper school looks like now and how we will operate and spacing out the different grade levels uh, across divisions to have smaller groups on campus to really work through the plans, the policies, and to answer any questions they have about it. I think that's the, the key element. There'll be some other pieces that divisions will share, um, but I think that captures sort of how we wanna manage this on board. That's wonderful, thank you so much. So the second question that I have heard a lot about is around reopening. So. We've used all of the touch points that you mentioned for evaluating the decision to reopen campus and shortly we'll be at the point where we are open and students are on campus. And so can you just talk a little bit about what will be our benchmarks, what will be our best practices in making decisions as we move forward in terms of the model and then how will we communicate those changes to families? Yeah, sure. Um, first is we're, as I mentioned, there was that uh, kind of county alert level um, advisory system. And we are watching that. We've got some information that that system may be changing, but we will stay connected to the state of Ohio um, data and how they are sort of demarcating risk levels in different communities. So that will continue to, to uh, be on our, on our minds. We, we're taking a, a perspective that has both an external and an internal data collection. So we will be watching the, the state of Ohio and also staying connected to Franklin County public health to understand what's going on in and around our community. But we also then will be tracking how are we doing on campus? Because if things are elevating around Wellington, but we are managing very few cases and we feel really great about our protocols, then that should be a really important part of our driver of the decisions we make. So we're trying to find that balance of getting information externally and internally, staying connected to Franklin County to then make those decisions. And if so, we'll, we'll be timely as we need to be. If it feels like an urgency, we'll get that messaging to families and make a, a pivot to one of the other models. Um, but I think that important thing people to understand is that we'll be tracking external to data, connecting that with our internal dynamics, and then making decisions. 
Thank you so much. That's very helpful. So the next question is a pretty tough one. Um, for families who have parents that have comorbidity considerations or immunosuppressed family members or even the students themselves being immunosuppressed, how can they evaluate and make this decision to go back in the classroom? Can they safely walk back in the school? Yeah, that's a, a, a really important and, and challenging question for sure. We, we of course want to articulate that we've built a model on our campus that, that emphasizes safety and our distancing and mask wearing. Um, we've gotten feedback about that, that that will, will go, go so far to help keep everybody safe. But I also understand that if you've got a, a more complicated medical issue in your family, that that may, that may give the students some concern or you may have some additional concern. And so being able to make that decision to stay home and still have the access to what I think is going to be a really outstanding educational experience, that's a decision that that family can then hopefully make and feel good about that the student's still not missing out on elements of our program. Also, I wanna emphasize communication. All of this is really hard, challenging work and we're on shifting sands. Things are changing each day as we navigate this. So connecting with your homeroom teacher, with your advisor, with your division head, with me, uh, reaching out, making sure we have all the information about your story, your needs, and, and how it's working for you um, is something that, that is core to Wellington. We'll continue that so that communication is going to be critical as we navigate these uh, challenging situations. Thank you, Jeff. The last question that we have time for is around the, the flexibility and the timing that you just mentioned. So we heard a lot of questions around shifting from on-campus learning to remote learning and then from the other side of the coin and shifting from remote learning to on-campus. Can you unpack a little bit further around the cadence and parameters for making that shift for families? Sure, it's a, a totally fair question and we're always trying to work to find this balance of having the information we need to be able to build uh, the, the, the resources and structure to, to serve students really effectively. So trying to get information about students' intent to stay off campus is a really critical piece. Um, and we went back and forth on the, the time window to do that. Again, so we can plan and, and have systems in place to support that. So we, we started with that four-week window. So a student that chooses to be off campus to start the year, if then decides, okay, I'm ready to, to re-enter campus. I'm hearing things that are interesting and I want to join that they'll be able to make that shift onto campus. For the students and families that choose to be on campus from the start of the year, if they get started and it doesn't feel like what they thought it was going to feel like or they learn other things about their own family story and, and medical concerns, then they can always shift to then be remote and to be um, learning from home. So they'll have that flexibility. We're not gonna make anybody stay on campus if they're not feeling comfortable about that. But they also at the four week point could make a choice to then shift to the different model again to help with our planning so that we can make sure all the students are served really well. And then finally, as I mentioned before, students that are feeling ill or, or have a worry about that, of course, they, we will encourage that they then utilize that learning from home technology. Uh, sometimes we know students are worried about missing something. Um, and we are trying to put everything in place that they won't be missing. Um, stepping away to, to help keep everybody safe is a really prudent and thoughtful decision. Um, and we'll make sure they still get the education. So helping students to understand that and also families that we've got that flexibility to be off campus. And we'll look at that, that um, cadence and that the four week um, window and, and continue to get feedback. But we thought that was a, a thoughtful place to start the year um, and we hope that'll serve families really well. Excellent, well, thank you. That concludes the top questions I had for you today. It also concludes the main session. So Dr. Terwin, I want to thank you once more. And with that, we will go ahead and move on to breakouts. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.